Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. For Crypto Talk, Dwyer70905.substack.com, a paid site, today.substack.com, a paid site. Today is Tuesday, November 9th, 2021. Let's talk about Canelo's victory over Caleb Plant. First, let me just say, it was a thin margin for us. We were running out of time, but the hedge held. Canelo got the stoppage. I thought Caleb Plant would win the fight, but I'm okay with the hedge. Let's talk about it. You know, it's easy for someone on YouTube to talk about what to avoid when you're fighting an all-time great. It's much harder to do so when you're tired, 10 rounds in, and that all-time great is going for the knockout. Now, in the 11th round of a highly competitive fight, one in which I personally gave Khaled Plant the first three rounds. One in which it took Canelo some time to get the timing of the fight. And even when he did, he was getting hit with jabs. Right? A fight in which I thought controversy would ensue over the scoring. If this fight made it to the distance, and I say that recognizing that Canelo had the edge on the CompuBox numbers. Well, in that 11th round, Caleb Plant made three mistakes you can't make when you're tired and trying to survive against Canelo. Now, you know what those three mistakes are. If you saw an earlier video I made before the fight, talking about boxing angles. The first mistake is he is by the ropes with nowhere to go. He's pinned. The second problem is he's perpendicular to Canelo. In other words, he has his right shoulder close to Canelo. He's looking toward Canelo's left shoulder. He's in a position where he can't throw his left hook. And folks, that left hook is by far Caleb Plant's best punch. In other words, Canelo has him pinned in such a way where Plant doesn't have the option of throwing his left hook. He doesn't have the spacing. He doesn't have his feet right. He's wedged between Canelo and the ropes. So it's a free shot for Saul Alvarez. And of course, Plant is, here's the third problem, within range of Canelo's left hook. Right, let me be clear, at the risk of sounding like Oliver Stone, let me be clear, when you're facing Canelo you simply cannot go back and to his left. You can't, especially when you're tired. Now I notice in the early rounds when Caleb Plant is 100% rested and alert, I notice Plant's going both ways, right? He's going to Canelo's left hook, he's going to the other direction, he has a sense of distance. He knows when he goes to Canelo's left, he's too far away from Canelo. That's how he's playing the early rounds, right? Let me just say, even if you're a daredevil, which is who Plant is, even if you're a daredevil, when you start to tire after round five, you cannot play games with Canelo's left hook. It's far and away his best punch. Let me also say too, there is little difference between the ending of the Kovalev fight and the ending of this fight. What that should tell you is Canelo, whatever expression he has on his face, no matter how lost or clueless he looks at times in the fight, 
You need to understand that Canelo is thought out. He has a mental edge. Guys aren't over by the ropes by happenstance. They aren't wedged in such a way. Look at how Kovalev's body was. They aren't wedged in such a way where they're walking into Canelo left hooks. Right, folks? This is a guy who's just like Floyd, who's just like Ali, who's just like Salvador Sanchez. They're out thinking opponents and they're putting opponents in position where they can take advantage. Now let me just say, boxing is thankfully an international sport, said the immigrant making a boxing video. Canelo is now history's first undisputed super middleweight champion. And folks, let me just point out, he did it the hard way. He did it by beating four reigning 168 pound champions. Rocky Fielding, Callum Smith, who was unbeaten, Billy Joe Saunders, who was unbeaten, and now Caleb Plant, who was unbeaten. Let me say that he also did this after holding the belts at light middleweight, middleweight, and let's not forget light heavyweight. He's on the short list of the all-time greats. Not just in Mexico. And you heard me mention one of my favorite fighters, Salvador Sanchez. You also have, of course, other great fighters, Julio Cesar Chavez, for example. But understand, Canelo's stage is international. Right? He's on the short list of all-time greats, right? This resume, quite frankly, is stunning. Let's look back at the four champions at 168 that this guy beat. Rocky Fielding by stoppage. Billy Joe Saunders by stoppage. Caleb Plant by stoppage. Folks, we need to look back at that Callum Smith fight. Now you have to congratulate Callum Smith for simply going the distance with Canelo. So now as we look at 168 and we look at some glorious names at 168. Joe Kalzaki, for example. Andre Ward, for example. We do have to ask the question, how would Canelo do against them? Understand, these are the kinds of questions that never get resolved, but that people keep talking about, right? Much like in my household growing up, my dad and I had an ongoing argument, right? Who would win, Ali or Mike Tyson? And we understood we couldn't answer that argument. My dad did famously say to me after the Buster Douglas fight, the next time I was home, he said, hey, you know, Douglas has a nice jab, but it's not an alley jab. Right now, you know, I had to just shrug it off. Let's just say, folks, because of Canelo's excellence, fathers and sons are going to be having conversations like that about Canelo in different weight classes. Right? Somewhere someone is going to say, hey, at 160, how would Canelo have done against Marvelous Marvin Hagler? Against Carlos Monzon? Let's remember, Canelo, of course, shares part of the rich history at 160. Right? It could be based on how Canelo proceeds in his career that we're asking those questions about 175, about Canelo against greats like Michael Spinks, who you might recall went up to heavyweight and not just beat Larry Holmes twice, 
but beat Jerry Cooney, right? Major slugger from the late 70s who beat Ken Norton in one round. Let me also say, too, that boxing is a multi-layered sport. From time to time, the camera would go into Canelo's corner. I thought Eddie Reynoso did a fantastic job. Folks, he's there calming down his fighter. He's there telling the fighter what he needs to do. Whatever is happening in the fight, and I thought the fight was close. I know the judges' scorecards disagree with me. I thought the fight hung in the balance as of the start of the 11th round. But understand, you couldn't tell that from Eddie Reynoso. Great temperament. The house could be on fire and Eddie is calm. Right? He's not a fan club trainer who's going to always say, Champ, you're doing great. Right? No, this is the guy who's saying, Look, you need to calm down. You need to throw some uppercuts. You need to hit him more in the body. I thought Eddie Reynoso did a great job. Canelo's trainer... Uh, understand there are conversations in the background, according to rumor, that Anthony Joshua has considered hiring Eddie Reynoso. Let me also say, too, in that 11th round of a major fight where Canelo is closing in on the undisputed championship at 168, a fight where the referee, like me, may have believed the fight was extremely close. I thought the ref did an outstanding job. Again, boxing has more than the fighters. Right? Khaled Plant gets hit and dropped. Now understand, a premature stoppage would have hurt the fight. Right? There's some folks like me. I'll just badmouth one fan here. I'll badmouth myself. If you agree with me, just quietly nod your head. You don't have to acknowledge yourself in public. But there's some fight fans like me who believe that certain people in the sport, right, Anthony Joshua, Manny Pacquiao, Canelo, right, cash cow fighters, fighters who feed a lot of people, not even in their camp, Start fights with two round advantages. So here you have the favorite. Too overwhelming a favorite. Let's remember Caleb Plant goes off at a plus 550. You have him drop Plant. Right? Plant doesn't slip, he's hit. Right? First he's forced over by the ropes, then he gets hit with the left hook. Right? He's hit. He's down. Yes, Canelo can throw that left hook from low. I understand it looks like an uppercut at times. Plant gets up on shaky legs. You're the referee, folks. This referee watched Plant on shaky legs in this PC era shuffle across the entire ring. Right? You know, the guy gets off the canvas, the referee's about to say to him, hey, are you okay? The fighter, of course, is always going to have a poker face. Here, Plant has a poker face, but he can't even keep his balance in one place. He's leaning forward. He literally shuffles all the way to the other corner. Now, we've seen squeamish referees who've apparently never seen a horror movie or a fight with blood in it. This referee was not that guy. He watches Plant shuffle across the entire ring. And he does not stop the fight. Rather, he walks over to Plant. looks at Plant and lets the fight continue. Now I understand those of you who don't understand that boxing is the hurt business might have been appalled. Here is 
plant in against one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in the sport. Plant has been dropped. Plant is clearly hurt. Plant can't even stand in one place when he gets off the canvas. But folks, this was Plant's shot of a lifetime to himself become the undisputed champ at 168 pounds. Plant wanted the fight to continue. I understand. Boxers are warriors and, you know, some of these warriors always want the fight to continue. Right? Famously, years ago, after a fight, they were talking to Carmine Basilio. And he admitted that he couldn't see out of one eye. But as Carmine put it, but I could see out of my other eye. That was enough. <laughs> that was enough. <laughs> he continued fighting. Here, I have no doubt. Caleb Plant could have been blind in one eye. He would have wanted to continue. By the way, Carmine Basilio was more fortunate than Joe Fraser, who only could see out of one eye to begin with because of an injury in the ring when he was younger who had his good eye closed and who couldn't see out of any eye but wanted to continue fighting Ali in the 15th round of the thriller in Manila he was dealing with Eddie Futch his own trainer who pulled the plug on that fight well let me just point out here this referee, in my opinion, given the circumstances, wisely lets the fight continue. Now Canelo, who I was faulting for not having Khaled Plant's foot speed, practically looks like Usain Bolt racing across the ring. Now at this point, even a groggy Khaled Plant understands I want nothing to do with Canelo's left hand. So, of course, Canelo finishes the fight with two straight right hands. Right? Excellent fight. I congratulate Canelo. History's first undisputed champion at 168 pounds. Right? Let me also point out, too, that he's clearly one of the great fighters of his era. He has done this in a way that even Usyk hasn't done. Right? Understand, Usyk was always around Cruiser. Here is Canelo picking up other belts before nailing down the undisputed status at 168. And let's also say this too. There are other undisputed champions in the sport. Let me give a nod to Terrence Crawford, who I still consider, even after this great performance by Canelo, to be the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? It's windy here. It's not that windy. Right? I'm still rolling with Crawford and Josh Taylor. But understand, most of these guys who pick up undisputed belts often are fighting guys with multiple titles. Right here again, Canelo shows up at 168. He doesn't become undisputed through a side door or back door. He walks in the front door, beats four title holders, three of them who were unbeaten before they faced him. Right, folks? You need to view this as a historical run. Let me also say too, when you come across a great, that great opens the door up to different sides of the sport. So here you have Canelo at 168 and it does beg the question, is he the best ever at 168? This is a great opportunity, great opportunity to look back on Calzaghe who retires unbeaten. 
right? Beats Roy Jones and Bernard Hopkins above 168 in his last two fights. And on Andre Ward who retires unbeaten. Understand, Andre Ward was an underdog when he was in a tournament involving Mikel Kessler, Carl Froch, another guy in that tournament, and others. And understand, Andre Ward ends up beating both Mikel Kessler and Carl Froch. Let me also say too, for those interested in history, the great Ray Leonard fought light heavyweight champion Donnie Lalonde. But they did so at a catch weight. That catch weight, ironically, was 168. Now, in the fight, Ray Leonard, who was a daredevil, gets dropped. Lalonde drops him. Now, in one of Ray's best moments ever, and it's Ray Leonard against Donnie Lalonde, Leonard gets off the canvas and closes the show. He was looking bad in that fight, folks. Lalonde was a puncher. Ray Leonard's KO of Lalonde reminds me a lot of Canelo. Right? Great men somehow find ways to have their punches travel with them to higher weight classes. Let me also say, too, in terms of current fighters, right, much as we remember today, Joey Maxa, the light heavyweight champion who Ray Robinson, before he retires from the sport the first time, and I'll say Ray Robinson is the closest thing boxing has to a Michael Jordan, right, in his prime, Ray Robinson decided he was going to leave the sport. Right? Let's remember Ray had killed a man in the ring. Right? There are parts to the Ray Robinson story that need to be explored. Right? Robinson, in interviews, said that he didn't like fighting for a living, that he preferred dancing. He ends up leaving the sport to be a dancer. Then he returns to the sport, just like Michael Jordan. Well, understand. Ray Robinson, when he's on his run, right? Ray's at his best before he walks away from the sport the first time, just like Jordan was. Decides he's going to gain weight to fight Joey Maxa. Now, today we remember Joey because Ray wilts in that fight and Maxim beats him. But what I want people to do now is to look at Canelo. Let me also give advice to Canelo from someplace in my crib that's showing up publicly on YouTube. Right? If I am Canelo, unless I plan to try to be undisputed in other weight classes, right? He's already beaten Kovalev, folks. Retervyev and Bivol await him. But let me just say, unless I plan to be undisputed in more than one weight class, I stop fighting for titles. Right? He already has a collection of them. He's already undisputed at 168. We don't need to see Canelo win another title to be impressed. Let me point out, you have a famous fight where Marco Antonio Barrera fights a guy, wins the title. They try to give him the belt in the ring and Barrera, a great fighter, waves it off. Right? He didn't want to be tied down by a sanctioning body. He wanted to fight whoever he wanted to fight. And that included other champions. He didn't want to hear about mandatory contenders. He understood, I'm a great fighter, I'll fight who I want. I just beat this guy who had a belt, I don't need his belt. I'm leaving this ring with the victory. I want Canelo to take that point of view. Now style-wise, Canelo just beat two excellent movers. I thought both would beat it. Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant, both of them 
have among the best legs in boxing. Style-wise, there's an untied shoelace out there. Right? Canelo's going to shine a light on many in boxing. There's always someone for great boxers to fight. I want the world right now to look at a guy who will not let a pocket form against Canelo. A guy who is unbeaten. A guy who Canelo called an m -er. Back when Canelo fully understood that that term didn't mean anything negative toward the guy's actual mother. And that's Demetrius Andre. Right, folks? Demetrius Andre is unbeaten as I make this video. Andre physically, even though he was fighting at a lower division, Andre physically is bigger than Canelo. If you, like me, believe that Canelo had problems against Billy Joe Saunders, who I feel gave that fight away, and Caleb Plant, who I feel wins the first three rounds here, and with a strong finish, not this finish where he gets finished, but with a strong finish, could have made this fight debatable. Then you have to look at Canelo against Demetrius Andre as an extremely intriguing fight. Andre, of course, would have to move. But as he moves, he could not go back into Canelo's left, especially not when he's tired. Stylistically, that's an intriguing fight. Let's talk about Canelo in the pocket. Understand, Canelo's undisputed at 168, but there's a champ, a guy who had the belt at 168, who, of course, no longer has it, right? This is boxing. We understand there's politics. We understand there are failed tests that can strip titles and things like that, knock out your next fight and stuff like that. David Benavides would fight Canelo differently. You saw Canelo on his front foot the last few fights. Right? Rocky Fielding, Callum Smith, uh, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, uh, Kovalev. Canelo's been on his front foot of late. Right, the last fight where he's flashing a lot of back foot and Canelo has a back foot was the Danny Jacobs fight, if I'm correct. Could anybody, and this is the big question, could anybody stay on their front foot against David Benavides, who's big for the division? Who hits hard, who has hand speed, who can shorten his punches, who's a knockout puncher? Right, a big fan of David Benavides, not surprisingly, is Mike Tyson, who hit like Benavides, <laughs> threw short punches, who you weren't going to walk up to in his prime. Benavides, of course, was the champ at 168. Right, Benavides has had some problems. Right, failed drug tests, you can research that for yourself, serious drug. But understand, Benavides' talent is such that some insiders, Abel Sanchez comes to mind, believes that he has a real shot on Canelo. Let's also open the door to the rest of the division at 175, folks. You have some names we have not thought of as being in the ring with Canelo, who would make a fascinating fight. Could you imagine Canelo trying to walk up to Arthur Perturbiev? Understand, while they both destroy guys in the pocket, they're very different. Right? Canelo is refined. He's detail-oriented. This is what his camp's all about. It's hard to find Canelo's head. It's on a swivel. It's protected by a high guard. Canelo thinks about defense. You'll notice when Canelo throws big punches, including one of boxing's best left hooks, that Canelo will bring the punch back after he throws it. 
and have it back in a defensive stance. Right? This is the craftsman with boxing technique. Right? As I've said, guys end up up against the ropes by design against Canelo. Right? He's cornering you. He's measuring you. By contrast, Perturbiev is the tough guy. Who's the absolute gunslinger? Right? Perturbiev in defense? I I'm not sure if those two words belong in the same sentence. Perturbiev wants things to fall apart. He wants things to be personal. I've noticed, you know, there are fighters like the Canelo plant fight was a bit personal, right? But they're fighters who always make it look like it's a business deal. Carlos Monzon, right? You didn't get the feeling Monzon hated opponents, even though Monzon destroyed opponents. You got the feeling that it was Saturday at 7 p.m., Monzon had a scheduled fight, you're the opponent, and okay, it's a business deal. Let's get after it, right? Monzon didn't have to call you names. Monzon didn't need that to get himself excited. Monzon fought primarily in Argentina, his home country. The fans were there. He didn't have to play a role to get fans in the seats. But then you have fighters like Arthur Peterbiev, who has a bit of Ali in him. Right? Peterbiev's a guy who looks across the ring and looks at you. There's a mental game. He needs to have you understand, hey, whoever you fought before, you're now in the big league, son. Right? There's a little Jack Johnson in him. Right? He's looking at you like, what are you going to do? Right? Then, of course, when he comes after you, he's not worried about throwing punches, then bringing them back for his defense. No, no, no. This is a guy trying to take you out. Folks, I can just guarantee you that Perturbiev is not going to spend any extended period of time on his back foot moving away from Canelo like Caleb Plant did. Right? You know boxing has egos. You know light heavyweights privately feel insulted that anybody smaller than them thinks they can come in the division. Then, of course, you have another boxer. You need to consider him. I view him as the best light heavyweight out there. It's not Peterbiev. It's my guy, Bivol. Now, he moves, but it's different movement. He's not moving away from you for defensive purposes. No, he's moving just to create openings. He has more stamina than Canelo. It's debatable whether he hits harder than Canelo, but he has the faster hand speed. Let's name two other guys. They're about to fight. King Arthur. That's the nickname. He's unbeaten. King Arthur is about to fight Anthony Yard. Now, I'm picking Yard in that fight, but Arthur is the technician. He has one of boxing's best jabs. Now understand, we talk about not going back and to his left against Canelo. I don't believe Arthur would have to. Because in the pocket, he might be able to keep Canelo off of him with that jab. Right? That's an intriguing fight. Understand, Arthur's already beaten Anthony Yard. Right? Understand, we have to talk about fighters like this because I saw Canelo at the weigh-in for the Caleb Plant fight. Now, Plant hops on the scale. He's posing for the crowd. Everyone's cheering. Canelo hops on the scale, folks. He gave the scale, to quote F. Scott Fitzgerald, Canelo gave the scale a look that you could have poured on a waffle. Right? He's staring at the scale. Then they announced the weight. The weight limit's 168. Canelo's weight, 168. 
Folks, I'm not sure if Canelo can make 168 comfortable anymore. So we have to look at 175. And then, of course, you have one of boxing's big mysteries. One of the hardest punchers in boxing, two-handed, Anthony Yard. But there's a lingering question about Anthony Yard. Does he know what he's doing? Understand, sometimes it's the unstructured guy who's the toughest opponent. Because you can't predict what's going on. Now, Kovalev was able to beat Yard with a great jab. In fact, Yard's lost to two great jabs in boxing. Kovalev and King Arthur, Lyndon Arthur. Right? Does Canelo, who doesn't have great reach at 175, try to keep Yard outside with a jab? Or does Yard figure out that with a little bit more head movement, upper body movement, he could slip a jab. Get inside where he's a terror. Right? This is a guy with long power. This is a guy with short power. This is one of those guys who's just blessed with heavy handedness in both hands, but who sometimes seems to get distracted in fights. So let's just say, <coughs> Canelo's 31. Folks, to quote Tupac, all eyes are on him. This is a great fighter. Let's appreciate it while it lasts. He's on a historical run. He's a kingmaker at this point. Whatever he does from this point forward, I think he's obviously first ballot. Hall of Fame. Right, so if I'm Canelo, I think about the toughest opponent I can go in against. If that's perturbiv, okay, let's roll the dice. Or I think about that fighter who has gotten under my skin. If I'm calling a guy an MFer, he's a thorn in my side, he's unbeaten, like three of the four guys I beat the champions at 168. Maybe I make a run at Demetrius Andre. Right? Maybe I decide, maybe Canelo has his own ranking at 175 and maybe he thinks Bivol, who's unbeaten, is the best. Maybe he tries to make a statement by fighting Bivol before doubling back the fight perturbiv, who's older, right? Look at the ages, right? Maybe I show up at the King Arthur Anthony Yard fight, and then I announce in the ring that I want the winner, right? Understand, both of those guys are British. This would be an opportunity to do an Ali-type world tour, right? Cross the Atlantic, fight in the UK, Extend your brand in a meaningful fight. Let's just say Canelo has been doing great things. At this point, I put nothing past him. Excellent fighter. I applaud him on this great finish to what I personally consider was a very highly competitive fight. Finally, let me close by saying, look, there's this fan angle. Canelo's a great fighter, no doubt about it. But then there's the betting angle. Right? I don't believe an unbeaten champion, which is who Caleb Plant was, should be getting a plus 550. Right? Rest assured that if Canelo fights Demetrius Andre, David Benavides, Arthur Baturbiev, Bivol, King Arthur, Yard, and any of those men are getting a plus 550, I'll be here online saying take the underdog, hedge with Canelo by stoppage, 
Right, folks, boxing's an international sport. It's also a highly competitive sport. Right, somebody has to be on the other side of the play. And I could look at an obviously great fighter and still believe that the line is out of whack. If you think Khaled Plant should have been a plus 550 underdog in this fight, then you didn't see this fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.